Celestial globe with clockwork, 1579, partly gilded silver, gilded brass and steel, overall, 27. 3 times 20. 3 times 19. 1 cm, diameter of the globe, 14 cm, from Vienna, Metropolitan Museum of Art Celestial Globe, after 1621, paper, brass, oak and stained and light-colored wood, overall, 52. 1 times 47. 3 cm, diameter of the globe, 34 cm, from Amsterdam, Metropolitan Museum of Art Celestial Globe show the apparent positions of the stars in the sky. They emit the sun, moon, and planets because the positions of these bodies vary relative to those of the stars, but the ecliptic, along which the sun moves, is indicated. There is an issue regarding the handedness of celestial globes. If the globe is constructed so that the stars are in the positions they actually occupy on the imaginary celestial sphere, then the star field will appear reversed on the surface of the globe. This is because the view from Earth, positioned at the center of the celestial sphere, is of the mnemonic projection inside of the celestial sphere, whereas the celestial globe is orthographic projection as viewed from the outside. For this reason, celestial globes are often produced in mirror image, so that at least the constellations appear as viewed from Earth. Some modern celestial globes address this problem by making the surface of the globe transparent. The stars can then be placed in their proper positions and viewed through the globe, so that the view is of the inside of the celestial sphere. However, the proper position from which to view the sphere would be from its center, but the viewer of a transparent globe must be outside it, far from its center. Viewing the inside of the sphere from the outside, through its transparent surface, produces serious distortions. Opaque celestial globes that are made with the constellations correctly placed, so they appear as mirror images when directly viewed from outside the globe, are often viewed in a mirror, so the constellations have their familiar appearances. Written material on the globe, e. g. Constellation names, is printed in reverse, so it can easily be read in the mirror. Before Copernicus's 16th century discovery that the solar system is heliocentric rather than geocentric and geostatic the stars have been commonly, though perhaps not universally, perceived as though attached to the inside of a hollow sphere enclosing and rotating about the Earth. Working under the incorrect assumption that the cosmos was geocentric the 2nd century Greek astronomer Ptolemy composed the Almagest, in which the movements of the planets could be accurately represented by means of techniques involving the use of epicycles, deference, eccentrics, and equance. Dot. Guided by these ideas astronomers of the Middle Ages, Muslim and Christian alike, created celestial globes to represent in a model the arrangement and movement of the stars. In their most basic form celestial globes represent the stars as if the viewer were looking down upon the sky as a globe that surrounds the earth. The Roman writer Cicero reported the statements of the Roman astronomer Gaius Sulpicius Gallus of the 2nd century BC, the first globe was constructed by Thales of Miletus. This could indicate that celestial globes were in production throughout antiquity however, without any celestial globes surviving from this time, it is difficult to say for sure. What is known is that in Book 8, Chapter 3 of Ptolemy's Almagest he outlines ideas for the design and production of a celestial globe. This includes some notes on how the globe should be decorated, suggesting the sphere a dark color resembling the night sky. Constellation of Delphinus from a copy of Abd al-Rahman al-Sufi's Book of Constellations, 1125 al-Sufi, Abu Hussein Abd al-Rahman ibn Umar al-Sufi, was an important 10th-century astronomer whose works were instrumental in the Islamic development of the celestial globe. His books, The Book of the Constellations, comma was a description of the constellations that combines Greek-slash-Ptolemaic traditions with Arabic-slash-Bedouin ones. The Book of the Constellations then served as an important source of star coordinates for makers of astrolabes and globes across the Islamic world. Similarly this treatise was instrumental in displacing the traditional Bedouin constellation imagery and replacing it with the Greek-slash-Ptolemaic system which ultimately came to dominate all astronomy. The earliest surviving celestial globe was made between 1080 and 1085 CE by Ibrahim ibn Said al-Sali, a well-known astrolabe maker working in Valencia, Spain. Although the imagery on this globe appears to be unrelated to that in al-Sufi's The Book of the Constellations al-Wazanda seem to have been aware of this work as all 48 of the classical Greek constellations are illustrated on the globe. Just as in al-Sufi's treatise, with the stars indicated by circles. In the 13th century a celestial globe, now housed in the Mathematische Physikalischer Salon in Dresden, was produced at one of the most important centers of astronomy and intellectual history. 
The Elkanid Observatory at Mariga in northwestern Iran constructed in 1259 and headed by Nasir el dln Tust, the renowned polymath. This particular scientific instrument was made by the son of the renowned scientist Muawai al urdi al Damashki, Muhammad B. Muawai al urdal in 1288. This globe is an interesting example of how celestial globes demonstrate both the scientific and the artistic talents of those who make them. All 48 classical constellations used in Ptolemy's Almagest are represented on the globe, meaning it could then be used in calculations for astronomy and astrology, such as navigation, timekeeping or determining a horoscope. Artistically, this globe is an exciting insight into 13th century Iranian illustration as the 13th century was a period when inlaid brass became a premier medium for figural imagery and so the globes from this period are duly exceptional for the detail and clarity of their engraved figures. Celestial globe is made by Dia ad-Din Muhammad in Lahore, 1668 A 17th century celestial globe was made by Dia ad-Din Muhammad in Lahore, 1668. It is now housed at the National Museum of Scotland. It is encircled by a meridian ring and a horizon ring. The latitude angle of 32 degrees indicates that the globe was made in the Lahore workshop. This specific workshop claims 21 signed globes, the largest number from a single shop making this globe a good example of celestial globe production at its peak. The globe itself has been manufactured in one piece, so as to be seamless. This complicated process was, if not invented, then certainly perfected, in the Lahore workshop Dia ad-Din Muhammad worked in. There are grooves which encircle the surface of the globe that create 12 sections of 30 degrees which pass through the ecliptic poles. While they are no longer used in astronomy today, they are called ecliptic latitude circles and help astronomers of the Arabic and Greek worlds find the coordinates of a particular star. Each of the 12 sections corresponds to a house in the zodiac. Thanks for watching.